Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're actually gonna be discussing the next installment in a series I've had going on on my channel called Would I Buy This Again? And I've been going through these typically in categories. I did my Natasha Denona palettes. I did my Natasha minis. I did my Charlotte Tilbury quads. And today, we're gonna do it with my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. So I do have five of them. And as we all know, these Mothership palettes are so pricey. So I thought I would go through and share with you if I would purchase these again. And this is one that was requested quite a while ago. I've just been sort of working through them, testing them out again to see really how I feel about each one so that I could really get my thoughts on this one. Pat McGrath frequently has 30% off sales on her website, so I never recommend paying full price for one of her motherships. They do retail for $129 US, 175 Canadian, which is bananas. So I always recommend waiting for one of her very frequent sales if you can. But let's hop in to my motherships. So first up, and the palette that I'm wearing today is actually the Sunlit Seduction Mothership. And this one is the one that came out last summer in 2023. And this is a very beautiful pinky gold color story. And I really do enjoy this one. This one got a lot of heat when it came out because people were upset with it for being just another pinky gold color story. In this palette, she also removed her Baked Blitz Astral Formula and just put in these super shimmery shades. And I know a lot of people were deeply upset by that because those Baked Blitz Astrals are why you purchase these motherships. And I 100% understand that. One of my complaints about the palette is that this cranberry shade up here is actually a dud. It is like a creamy shimmer and it just does not adhere to the lid very nicely. When you put it on, it just becomes very, very chunky and it's not at all flattering. Typically with these very creamy shimmers, I like to warm them up between my fingers before applying to the lid and usually that still gives you that super beautiful foiled effect without being chunky or texture enhancing. That didn't really work with this shade and no matter how many different times I've tried this shade, it does not work. That being said, I'm going to be completely honest with you, this is my most reached for Mothership palette. So while I think that it's not worth full price because we're missing some of those baked shades, this is my favorite color story of all of the motherships that I have and it's my most reached for. I don't like that there is a dud in here though. So my answer is that I would purchase this again given that it is my most reached for color story, but I would not purchase it again full price. I did purchase it full price because I wanted to review the palette, but I would purchase it again. I would just never pay full price for it. So I really do love this one despite its faults. I just, I would purchase it, but not for full price. Next up, we have the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction Palette. And I had purchased this one because it is a neutral bronzy brown color story, which is kind of like my favorite color story, and I thought this would easily be my most used. But for some reason, it's not. I think perhaps it's just too deep and smoky for my preferences, and then having these reddish bronzes in here, I think really steers me away because I absolutely do not mess with red on my lids. So because I don't like red, that kind of cuts out these two shades right here, and then it leaves these two Blitz Astrals, which are beautiful. These four are the Baked Blitz Astral formula. And then you just have this quad of very dark shades, except for this one. So I don't reach for this as often as I thought I would. And that's really sad because I really truly thought this would be my most reach for color story, but I sadly would not purchase brown seduction again. I think if you love these deep brown tones, I think you would love them. I think maybe deeper skin tones would love these. I just think on my very fair skin that these smoky browns just end up being a little too harsh on me sometimes. So I have to be very careful when I use it, which then steers me away from using it at all. So unfortunately, I would not purchase Bronze Seduction again. Next up, I have the Divine Rose 2 palette. So this one is one that I kind of eyed up for a long time. So this is another one that does have those four 
baked blitz astrals that we all love and then this has like that pan of six on this end so this again is another very rosy purple leaning color story we do get we do get some golds up here and then you also have this blitz astral right here which is a duochrome it shifts from pink to green on camera I see it looks fuchsia from this angle it looks green so I just think it's the coolest shade there is and because of that shade this palette caught my eye so many times I should also mention the Sunlit Seduction is the only palette I've ever paid full price for because I that's the first time I decided to review a mothership. All of these I've gotten on super sale on her website, so I do want to mention that. But I eyed this one up for the longest time mostly because of this shade right here, and I do love a good pink color story. So this palette is really, really pretty, and I do quite honestly love it. I love that you get this mauve tone up here too because I do love a good mauve look. I think I would purchase this one again. This is a good one. You know, you get the standard Blitz Astrals up here, plus you get these very wearable pinky mauve tones, and those are just my favorite shades to wear. So. I think I would purchase Divine Rose 2 again. I think this was a good purchase. I still reach for Sunlit Seduction more, but I would definitely purchase this one again. The next palette is Utopian Dream. So I believe this was her 2021 mothership. I am missing the one between this one and Sunlit Seduction, and I believe that's called Moonlit Seduction, and it is still on my wish list. So that could be added to my collection at some point, but this is the Utopian Dream Palette. This is another one that I stared at for the longest time. I wanted it so much. I just thought it was the prettiest palette. I love that you do get these pinky brown tones here. These three shades here actually remind me a ton of the shades in the Sunlit Seduction. So there is that, but then you get these really beautiful pink tones here. You do only get three of the Baked Blitz Astrals, but this shade here had my attention for so long. I swear I bought the palette for this shade, which is kind of embarrassing, but it's really beautiful. And I almost used this palette today instead of Sunlit Seduction, but again, that one went out because I love it so much. I think I would buy this again, if only because this shade lures me in, but I do love every shade in here. There is not one dead in this palette. I think everything is so beautiful. I always like the looks that I come out with, with this palette. So I would definitely, I would purchase Utopian Dream again. And the last palette I have is the original Divine Rose 1 palette. So this one is very pretty. This one's a lot more muted. A lot softer you still get the four blitz astrals this is one of her earlier motherships and then you kind of get these cool tone neutrals on the bottom and I picked up this palette because I thought that's definitely a color story I'm going to use much like bronze seduction I thought that's going to be the most wearable and I think that's true I think if you are new to the mothership palettes I think this is a great starter palette because it gives you an intro to those Blitz Astrals, but you also just get a softer color story to start with so you can become accustomed to the formula. I think if you're somebody who's not new to the motherships or makeup in general, I think it would be easy to find this one boring. And I do. So I really don't reach for this one as often as I thought I would. I think it's a very pretty color story in theory, especially because it almost leans into those cool tones but I really don't use it as much as I thought I would, and I do find it a little bit on the boring side, so I would not purchase Divine Rose 1 again, shockingly. Do overall love my motherships. I feel like I don't reach for them as often as I should, but I still really do enjoy them. I think they're stunning. I always look forward to her mothership launch every summer, so I am excited to see what she comes out with this year. I am still eyeing up the Moonlit Seduction palette, like I mentioned. I just think that one looks gorgeous. I think if you are new to motherships, like I said, if you're just interested in purchasing your first mothership, I think Divine Rose 1 is great. If you're looking for an everyday option especially, I think that's a great one. But for me, when I'm spending that much on a palette, 
I do want it to be wearable, but I also want it to be special, and I think that's what the what these other palettes do offer. So as an intro palette, I do recommend Divine Rose 1, but my absolute top two have to be Sunlit Seduction and Utopian Dream. Sunlit Seduction is not her best palette she's ever come out with, but it's my favorite color story, my most reach for a color story of the motherships. So that's really a personal preference thing. I think Utopian Dream is probably one of my absolute favorites. But that is it for me today. Let me know down below if you have any motherships, which one is your favorite, or let me know what category you'd like to see me do next. I was thinking of doing my Huda palettes, maybe my Viseart palettes. Let me know what you'd like to see because I will definitely do that. But that is it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!